And now, Healthy Eating with Leslie. Leslie shows healthy Italian choices. These recipes couldn't be easier to make and are healthy plus delicious. Leslie will show us two dressings for the salad to accompany your one-pot meal, along with a surprising substitute for Parmesan cheese. She will talk to us about some handy gadgets for easy veggie prep. Now here's Leslie with Healthy Eating. Since our theme is Italian, why not have a good, healthy Italian dressing? This is from Nathan Pritigan, one of the pioneers in healthy eating. This Italian dressing makes use of lemons, and rather than using the bottle of lemon, it's so much healthier to use real lemons. There are quick and easy ways to, to squeeze and get this juice out, as you'll see later, but you just need to have the freshly squeezed lemon, preferably, coupled with your choice of wine vinegar or rice vinegar. I'm using wine vinegar. Most of us have this in our kitchen. Uh, the vinegar is inexpensive. It's very tart. What you do not want to use in this recipe are the reduced balsamic vinegars like the olive tap. They're excellent, but save these to go directly on your food. Use the inexpensive kinds to mix in to make this dressing. Also, if you do choose to use apple cider vinegar, which is also a good choice, the better one to use is anything that has the mother, the cloudy kind. It's a lot better for you. Next, we have apple juice concentrate right out of the freezer. I keep this in my freezer because there are a lot of recipes that call for a sweetener, and this is a lot more healthy than using a refined white sugar. So I'll put the apple juice concentrate in. Calls for a little bit of water. And then we're going to put in garlic powder and ground sage or dried sage. Last but not least are spring onions. Give it a good mix. And this is going to be a much, much healthier alternative to a bottle dressing that comes with so much oil. You probably recognize this container. You can still use these mixes, but this is so much more healthy and you don't have to have all the oil in it. It's not needed, it's pure fat, and it's not good for us. Now that we've got this wonderful Italian dressing recipe, thanks to Nathan Pritikin, I wanna tell you one nice, idea that I had to make it creamy. And anytime you want to make something richer and creamier, you can simply add to it. In this case, I thought, wouldn't cashews be delicious? So I soaked some cashews and then mixed it in the blender with the existing dressing. And I came up with a delicious, creamy Italian dressing. So we're going to use this. But if you're trying to keep your fat low, a no a lower fat alternative to the cashews is to add cannellini beans. Any kind of white bean will do, but this is my favorite. It's the richest. You can use navy beans, you can use great northern beans, or you can use cannellini, and you have another creamy Italian salad dressing. One of the things I like to do when I'm making this creamy version is to add the green onions after blending so that they're not blended up into the dressing. But this is delicious, it's low fat, and it's creamy and rich. I think you'll enjoy it. Since we're talking about dressings and I like tips and shortcuts, here's a neat idea. If you have a jar of jam or jelly in your fridge and you're just about to the bottom of it, don't wash it out, don't throw it out, don't clean it out. Instead, get some white balsamic vinegar, add it to your jar, give it a shake, and now you have blueberry balsamic vinegar or strawberry balsamic vinegar. It's great for your next salad.
In my kitchen, I use a lot of citrus. A lot of recipes calls for fresh squeezed lemon juice, and it's a cinch if you've got the right tools. Of course, you can always just squeeze it with your hand. Most of us grew up with a type of um, citrus reamer, but this one's handy because it catches all of the seeds and it provides the receptacle for the juice to go into. But you also might be doing a dish or just steaming vegetables and you want a juice right over the dish. And so this reamer is a good tool. This is a citrus press and this is my favorite gadget. This is simply to extract the juice and it catches the seeds. So you put the halved citrus in upside down and press and you're good to go. This is one of our all-time favorite dressings. It's Jane Esselstyn's 321 dressing. It's three parts of your favorite balsamic vinegar, two parts mustard, and one part sweetener. And here's how simple it is to make. We add three tablespoons of balsamic. When I'm making a mixed dressing like this, I don't mind using an inexpensive store brand. It's more acidic, but it's fine for this case. If you have specialty balsamics from specialty stores, I would save that for when I use them directly on vegetables or directly on a salad and they're not being mixed in with mustard and a sweetener because these are good just as they are. You also want to stay away from the glaze in this recipe because it's like syrup and it's too thick. So just three parts of your favorite balsamic vinegar. Then is the mustard. You like it spicy? Go with spicy. I like Dijon, but I don't like it to be too spicy. One of the best mustards that you can use is this organic stone ground with no salt added. Two parts of that goes in. And the last part is a sweetener of your choice. I'm using maple syrup, but you can use honey or you could use agave nectar. That's going to give it a nice balance. An easy way to stir this up rather than this or a whisk is this little gadget that I've been using for years. It's often used with coffees, but it's a frother. And in just one second, you're done. So you've got a simple 3 2 one dressing that's going to be great on any salad or any vegetable. One of the most important tools you can have in your kitchen is simply a good quality chef's knife. You don't have to have a kitchen full of gadgets to eat healthfully. You just need to have at least one good quality chef's knife. You don't have to invest a lot of money in it and keep it sharp. It'll do most everything for you. I like the shortcuts and I like the gadgets because it makes me happy in the kitchen, but this is all you need to eat healthfully. One of the things I love to eat are tomatoes. They're so healthy, full of lycopene, and some of the most wonderful, tasty tomatoes that you can buy are the cherry tomatoes. Whether you buy conventional or organic, one of the chores is cutting them in half, and I've got a trick to show you a better way to do it. You can simply use the bottom of two plates or two very shallow dishes, and you simply put the tomatoes on the rim like this, cover it with the second equal size, take a long knife, preferably serrated, and you cut them all at once. Voila! Now they're ready to put into your bowl and they're already cut in half, ready to use. One of the best ways to quickly peel your vegetables is with a Y-shaped peeler. It's twice as fast, and it's a big improvement over this style. We're going to make a faux Parmesan sprinkle, and it's a great alternative to the Parmesan cheese we all grew up with. The ingredients are very simple, and believe it or not, we're going to be using almonds. Now, there are two ways to do this. One is to grind almonds in a high-speed blender. This is a dry container that comes with a Vitamix. It's an option. Um, the almonds do not have to be soaked because you want them to be, be dry, but an easier quick shortcut instead of grinding your almonds into an almond flour is to just buy almond flour. So you can buy almond flour and just put 
three quarters of a cup of that in a bowl. If you were grinding almonds, you would use one cup. And then you're going to add onion powder, just regular onion powder. You're going to use garlic powder. You're going to use salt. And the type of salt that I've been using for over 10 years is a real type of sea salt. As a matter of fact, it's called real salt. And you can get it in uh, different size containers. I even travel with it. After the salt, the last ingredient is what I consider to be the magic ingredient. It's called nutritional yeast. And nutritional yeast is nothing like brewer's yeast. It gives almost a cheesy flavor to it. You can buy it in the spice or baking sections of most stores, not every. And when you're at health food stores or at Whole Foods, you can even buy it in bulk. So I keep it all the time, and we're going to add just a little bit of nutritional yeast to this recipe. And then we're going to just toss it together. Before you know it, you've got a nice blend of a sprinkle that is a great alternative to Parmesan cheese to put on pasta, to put on steamed veggies. It's so good, I keep it on the table. I put it in a little shaker jar. I also have a little travel size that you can carry with you in your purse to restaurants. And you can repurpose spice jars and just have it in your freezer. Um, or you can put it in a small bowl on the table and serve it this way. But it's a really good alternative to Parmesan cheese, and I think you'll like it. Something as simple as measuring spoons you'd think are simply a no-brainer. Most of us grew up with these or have these in our kitchen, and they're certainly accurate and they're certainly handy. But what you really might want to invest in is a second set that are skinny. Why? Because they actually fit in your spice jars. Today we're going to make a one-pot spaghetti, and it's great and it's unique because instead of boiling these whole grain noodles in a pot of water, we're going to put them right in the pan. So here's how this is going to work. First, we're going to saute the onions because they have so much moisture. We don't need any oil to do this. We simply heat up the pan first so it's nice and hot. I like to use stainless steel. I'm using a Salad Master stainless steel frying pan. And I add the onions and then I add the mushrooms. They give off a lot of moisture. If you see them begin to caramelize or brown, you can add a, a smidgen of water or you can add a smidgen of a vegetable broth, but you just want to let those nice vegetables begin to caramelize and begin to cook. Then we're going to add zucchini, we're going to add yellow squash, we're going to add the bell peppers, and I've got a nice array. I've got red, orange, yellow. You want to eat from the color rainbow. And then we're going to add uh, garlic, and then we're going to let that saute for just a few minutes, and then we're going to part the vegetables, and we're going to put the whole grain pasta right in the middle. Then we're going to cover it with tomatoes, very juicy diced tomatoes. And the liquid from those tomatoes and the tomato sauce is going to cook the pasta, and a few minutes later, you're going to find that pasta to be tender and the sauce is going to be extra rich. The first thing we want to ensure is that we have a nice hot pan, and we do. So by adding the vegetables that have the largest percentage of water, you don't need any oil whatsoever. None. Oil just adds fat, unnecessary fat. We're going to let those saute for just a few minutes. If you need to add anything at all, you can add a splash of water, you can add a splash of veggie broth. We're just going to let those caramelize a little bit. Um, you can see the pan browning, and so it's been cooking for about three or four minutes. I can get some of that rich flavor off the bottom, and then I could toss in the mushrooms. But now my onions are nice and caramelized, 
I've deglazed the pan, and the next vegetable or onion, or excuse me, the next vegetable are mushrooms, and they're going to give off a lot of moisture too. I'm going to cover these, and we're going to let them cook down for just a few minutes. Let's take a peek and see how we're doing. Ooh, yeah. So one of the things I also like to do is sometimes add whole mushrooms if they're small or quarter the mushrooms because the mushrooms are an alternative for meat and they give a nice texture to the pasta. I'm going to be adding the bell peppers now and let them cook down just a little bit. I've got red, green, yellow. Where's that orange? The more colors you have, the better because you're eating from the color rainbow. You get all the antioxidants and all the nutrients and it's going to be super beautiful and healthy. So I'm going to let this cook down a little bit more and I'm going to wait and add the squash later because I cooked it, I, I cut it fairly thin. We're going to let that cook down for just a minute or so. Beautiful, beautiful and delicious looking. Okay, the next step is to add the pasta. So all I'm going to do is make room for it in the very middle of the pan. Put it right in there. And then cover it with tomatoes, pasta, uh, pasta sauce, diced tomatoes. There's so much liquid in these tomatoes that it's going to give the pasta all the liquid it needs to cook down. And we'll check it again in a few minutes and we will um, add the zucchini since it won't take very long to cook. Okay. Need to get that garlic in there. I don't like to saute the garlic because it has a tendency to burn, but you want those flavors to intermingle. And the Italian seasoning, I like to use spike, is going to make it very tasty. Now let's let that simmer. This is the Salad Master pot telling me that it's ready to turn down to a low heat. That's the beauty of this. This is going to let you know when it's ready to turn down. But before we finish, I'm going to add the zucchini and the yellow squash so that that can cook down as well. Get in there. We can let this steam and simmer until those noodles are cooked. We're going to give it a few more minutes and then we'll come back and check on it. One of the things I like to check before it gets too far along is how the pasta is doing. And one of the things you need to be concerned about with this technique is that there's plenty of liquid in the pan, and there is, but you also want to use a couple of forks and just spread that pasta apart because there's so much starch in there that it has a tendency to want to clump together. So just play with it a little bit with your fork and then put the lid back on and let her cook. Plenty of liquid and we're good to go. Now for the big reveal. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I'm liking the look of that. So the pasta underneath is 
probably cooked down by now. I usually mess with it a little bit more, but I just wanted you to see what the finished result looks like and to let you know too that depending on the type of tomatoes, diced tomatoes or tomato sauce that you've used, always feel free to add in some more tomato sauce or pasta sauce, but preferably use a brand that has no salt added because you've got to read the labels. You wouldn't believe how much added sodium and sugar are in these sauces. So by using the brands that are available at most stores near us with no salt added, this particular one is good, you can make it as rich and tomatoey as you like. Okay. Now that this is finished cooking, there are just two more ingredients I like to add. I like to add Kalamata olives. It's an option, but I don't add them at the beginning because if you do, then all that uh, sodium is going to leach into the sauce. And I kind of like to have these nice little bites mixed throughout the pasta. The other thing we're going to add is basil. You can add the basil during the cooking if you wish, but I like it to be not overly cooked. So you can add it here at the end, and of course you can garnish with it as well. Now we're ready to plate it up. And here's the completed dish with the faux Parmesan cheese. This is not real cheese, but it's a fantastic substitute. And you can use all you want. Today I hope you enjoyed watching Healthy Ways to Eat Italian. You got to see how it's very easy and very smart to saute without oil. You got to see how tasty dressings can be without being loaded with oil and too much salt. And I hope that you got some tips and tricks with shortcuts and learned that you can have your own faux Parmesan cheese to put on pastas and vegetables. And you can even carry your dressings and your pastas with you when so, you travel. I wanted to let you know that in case you missed episodes one and two, they're on YouTube now. And the episodes were great. Episode one was Satisfy Your Sweet Tooth. And I decided to bring those delicious decadent desserts and dishes out first because I wanted you to know that eating healthfully is not deprivation at all. It can be very, very tasty and a little bit fattening. Um, I did use some very calorie dense recipes we made brawnies with uh, walnuts and dates and we're going to be bringing dates back again next episode. We also made nice cream out of frozen bananas, a great dessert, and we started with gingered melon which is a great treat that you can take to any party or serve at home. The second episode was familiar, uh, healthier alternatives to familiar foods. And another thing we made last episode was the mac and cheese, but not with cheese. We made it with a cheese sauce, and it's called mac and trees because it has a little broccoli in it. It's very good, but you're going to maybe want to use that cheese sauce next episode to pair with your baked potatoes. We're going to have a potato party next episode, and you're going to get to see all kinds of toppings like the tempeh bacon we made with a BLT. It wasn't bacon, it was tempeh bacon, which is very easy to make and that's a great thing to crumble on your baked potato. We're going to be talking not only about potatoes, but we're going to be talking about the abundance of greens. Greens are so, so good for you, and in case you don't already know, we're so lucky here in Sun City to have Okatee Farm, Okatee Farmers Club, and all of these beautiful greens were grown right here in Sun City. We are going to be talking about ways to enjoy greens more often. You should be having them multiple times per day. And one of the great ways I like to enjoy greens is with a spritz of lemon. But if you really want to dress it up, I'm going to show you many, many different types of balsamic vinegar, both white balsamic and dark balsamic, infused balsamics, and all different choices. So stay tuned and catch us on YouTube. I'm Leslie Haas, and thank you for watching. And just keep remembering to love those foods that love you back.